You are watching Revelations, the biggest spiritual platform. We are the largest African spiritual platform. We talk everything Africa, everything blacks, everything that has anything to do with our spirituality. We are here to give to you. Today is a great day for me. One of my favorite guests is on the set, and we are going to discuss one very particular, one Sansu, very Sansu particular topic. Be a a hammer dream, in case a hammer dream, like me, young, can make delve deeper into it. This is what he's coming to talk about reincarnation. A year one thing, and when you mention anywhere, no, be any way. So, yeah, come on, and then I call this car. No one can say a reincarnated soul, and now we will ask him most definitely. So, once again, I welcome you. Press the bell, subscribe, tell other people to also watch this show because it is the biggest educational classroom that you acquire a lot of information from my name is mommy grace let's welcome chawe number i welcome you to revelation once thank again you, we love thank you thank you, you know we love you so in one minute greet the our viewers and our followers and then introduce yourself to them Eh, mi numo tete di akani jie nyo, chawe ulo mo ye pong, he nye nuo. Amno ne, mi suwa ni mangone ke higbe ne, ni eh, maha gan ke dangu imaji ni yo homo wo fin, afi yo afi, afi ya ni bani na wo, kwa nyuani na wo, wo ye gbo, nwo ye gbo ana, alo nti di mkwa ka fo wo ting, ka atwa akpe ye, wano waka himi, ka atwa tun atwa wo, ya agbe ye ko yi ingbe, shimo keji abu agu ye wa agbo na, ya fi manye suwa ni cha, manye jura mbla wo. Ene watu wa suni, ene cha, omanyaba. <laughs> Number <laughs> welcome once again. Thank Tell you. us a bit about homo. Okay. When you talk about homo, it's a general festival within um, some particular towns in the greater Accra region. And it doesn't also stop there, but it extends into other towns or other, um, should I say, other countries too, as well, because um, we have some towns around Togo that also celebrate. So actually, homo war is not a thing that uh, um, is limited maybe within greater Accra, but it extends. And whenever we talk about homo war, it's a festival of harvest, yeah, which is always, always celebrated to hoot at uh, hunger. The hunger, hunger that um, 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 rose up some time ago that was able to kill some people some time ago, but was not able to kill all. So people use that particular period to remember how food came in abundance and mm -hmm. how it was able to help them sustain their remaining lives to where they are now. So that's something little about Homo War. Homo War. So, Numo, your dressing has changed. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the titles, mm -hmm. is it that you've increased in, in your thing or you've just added, uh, you, you've added more because of the season? Oh, actually, we are in a season too, so uh, you have to understand. Okay. At the same time too, um, the way you make yourself is how people are going to see you. Yes. Uh -huh. And it's going to be something, will I say, which won't be nice if you are going out maybe into or onto a particular program and then you dress, excuse my language, or maybe anyhow. Uh -huh. So I also so how count. to dress according to your position. Exactly. Okay. So earlier, <laughs> Omaya Bacha, yeah. welcome to Revelations once again. Today we are going to discuss reincarnation. When we say reincarnation, what is reincarnation? When we talk about reincarnation, some call it um, transmigration of the soul. Some call it metempsychosis. Some call it samsara. Some call it rebirth. Some call it transanimation. It can only be given a very simple definition, as in a rebirth of a soul. Rebirth of a soul. So anyone that feels like, oh, as for this particular soul, the person has um, um, come back into the world, we can say that particular thing is reincarnated. No more shall we? Mami. You were Ghanaian. Yes, madam. Apart from Ga, mm -hmm. do you speak tree? Uh, the tree I understand to some extent. But whenever I speak, it's broken. Okay, <laughs> if you're Ga, Ga is full of me. Wow, what do you mean? Everything is Ga. Everything is Ga. You are watching Revelation. My English is just four. <laughs> so I'm just imagining how we are going to do this today. But we will still do it exactly. anyway, that, just that's like we thing. did it last time. Yeah, that's that's that time. <laughs> Okay, so you are watching Revelations with my favorite uh, guest. I really, really love him. I really, really 
cherish him. Yes. Maybe I would dinner no or yen in Yama ne quine so now you ni ama o quine so I wouldn't even say one me pe was him. Mm-hmm. And he, it, can we say this thing is true? This reincarnation thing? Oh, reincarnation is true. It's very, very true. Why? How? Okay. I'll start by saying that reincarnation is true in the sense that you might be living in a house and maybe someone might give birth. But as the child begins to grow, you might see some kind of experiences or doings of the child that might tell you that ah, this particular child is too young to be doing this particular thing. That tells you that the, the, the kind of reincarnation thing is really existing. And some people do not find out. They only leave their children to their feet until maybe those particular children grow. But those that really know of reincarnation, once you are, you are being given birth to, or before you even get a name, they go through mediums to contact the soul that has returned back to the universe again, to find out what the soul is coming back to do, who the soul was, who that particular soul used to be some time ago, what killed the soul, and what might even kill the soul in this new form again. Mm -hmm. Say that again. Yes. I'm repeating again that. Um, whenever someone gives birth, to some extent, that particular soul must be called through a medium to find out who that particular soul was in the previous life, what killed that particular soul, the work that particular soul did, and even to an extent, what will even cause that particular soul to depart in this current world the person has returned back to. Okay, we mm -hmm. want to give us a whole scenario, a whole story about reincarnation. Okay. Have you experienced anybody like that? Like, you know that Mami Grace was like this and can you know somebody who is in re can you tell that this soul is a, an, a reincarnated soul without consulting a medium? Oh, yes. There are so many, many aspects. Okay. One, um, there are some particular births that are not normal. Some births are not normal. Such just, as? As in a pregnant woman giving birth. There are some that are not normal because you end up or you just realize that maybe you just give birth and then before like there's something strange about that particular child. There was one that occurred in my town. The, uh, the woman gave birth, and then the child came with a tooth, an old, decayed tooth in the mouth. So those over there were like, hey, what's this? We've never seen this before. So they had to go and consult someone. And when they did so, the report that came was that this particular child was one, once among the group of priestesses. And then those that, once food is being prepared, they go to taste. After some number of years, she realized that when she departed from the world, no one has come over to take her place. So she has come back to take her turn. And she came with a tooth? Oh, she came with a tooth. Hey. Newly born baby, not even a day old, came into the world with a tooth. And after uh, 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 the, the child was consulted, uh, the soul was consulted, and all these things came out, the tooth was left there. It fell out uh, by itself. There was another one too I also heard of. The woman gave birth to there was a tooth over there. But not knowing that particular tooth was standing there for, um, like say, prosperity of that particular child and for the family. But the people were like, hey, we can't take this. So they, they, they told the, the doctor who was in charge, and the doctor had to remove the tooth out. So now, that particular gap hasn't been filled in the child's mouth. And that particular family, excuse my words, so they are, I can say they are in abject poverty now because they didn't know what that particular thing was, was about. They didn't know, I would like to say, much of reincarnation because they have, let's say, different um, doctrines from different um, um, religious denominations. So they might see those ones too as, oh, maybe this one is just a mistake or something of that sort. Aside that, myself too, I can also say I'm also, no, I can't, but I was reincarnated. Because when my mother gave birth to me, the only part of my life I can remember so much was when I was around four or five years. I remember um, during my teething period, I had this kind of decayed tooth. It was in series. And actually, I, I wasn't a fan of candies or toffees or all those things, but the thing was just there. And one thing was that my mother was like, I was always sick. I was always sick, so they had to go and consult a medium. Luckily, my late grandmother uh, uh, um, was a priestess. So through her, my mother was able to get the answer that I came into the world with some people, and then those people had their hands on me. So for me to become me in this new world, they have to just ward their hands off me so I can feel free. Because if not, they might take me back to where I came from. But I've been asking her these things, she doesn't tell me, until one day I saw it in a dream. So it was after a dream that I went to her, and then she began to narrate some of those things to me, and even as I was growing up, I also saw some of these strange things because um, before my, my, my uh, installation, I saw a series of gray hair on my chest and then somewhere around my back to the point that even if you stand not that far from me and you watch, you can also see it over there. But once my installation went on, everything came on to a successful end, those kind of gray hairs over there and all those stuff, they disappeared.
We also, in our particular um, worship, there was just one guy who was also initiated not long ago. Uh, I would say it was around 14, 15 years. What happened was that the parents were complaining that this particular child has been falling sick. He has been falling sick normally. He would just be there, he would just collapse. He would just be there, he would just faint. They went from one source to another, it was the same thing. And so the soul was, con uh, was contacting and so told them that, no, this was me. This was the kind of place I was. I was working here and I left. If no one can occupy the space, I am back to occupy my place as well. So for reincarnation, it is very, very true. It is very, very, very true. true. So I, it, it, I, the people on, in, on this earth, mm -hmm. we are see. Mm -hmm. They brought from four. Mm -hmm. now, how do we know this person is a reincarnated so This one, this one, this one. How? Okay. Uh, for you to know whether someone is reincarnated or not, it depends on the way the person acts. And also depends on the kind of aura that works for or against the person. Maybe uh, you might be in the house. Normally, I like that particular aspect because that's where you see things from this particular aspect when you just link up to play. But I can make any film on me. It's like um, the way others are behaving, he or she is not behaving in that aspect. When he or she goes to sit somewhere, he will behave in a different way. You might not understand this, but I'll explain. Mm -hmm. When that particular child links up with other children, maybe they'll be acting like elderly people. That particular child will not act as one. Just be, you just see that particular child sitting somewhere. When that particular child goes elsewhere to go and see too, it's the same thing. From that, you can tell that this particular person is what? It's a new soul. But when you check the, the, the character of the others, you might see that uh, before they even start playing, this one will tell you, Mi mafe, mami. This one will tell you, Mafi Papa. Then this one will just start telling you, This one is this, this is that. Even there are some, when you just ask them one question, the kind of explanations they'll give you will even baffle your understanding. So, so such people, once you just contact them, they will tell you that they are reincarnated. And then they have a particular kind of job they are coming to complete again before going so back. So it's not everybody that has reincarnated. It's not, it's not everybody. Some people are fresh in some town. Some they are fresh. Fresh in town. Yeah. So some if I'm reincarnated mm -hmm. so, and I'm not able to know ever mm -hmm. what happens to me, Oh, so many things will happen to you, and definitely you know. Because one, um, your kind of work you do will begin to fail you. Not that. But it's like some kind of bad omen will, start, will just start following you. In that we call something beshi. Yeah, that kind of thing will be following you almost wherever you go. Whatever people are doing that they are successful, once you just touch, that thing collapses. And there's nothing in particular I'm going to do to make you like stand unique until you go in contact and then you are being told out. This, this, this is the, the, the kind of person you wear. And so for you to start being successful in life, put this one here, do this thing here, do that thing there, and things will begin to move on well with you. And once you just take a step to start doing that, everything goes on well. What has karma got to do with, with reincarnation? Yes, karma is very real. In our traditional religion, we don't have it as karma do, but um, it has a link with reincarnation because the life someone lived earlier on in this world would determine the kind of, um, um, I'll say days, years, or ages the person will live in the afterlife before coming back to be reincarnated. And also, also some of these consequences that you were supposed to um, 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 get whilst you were once here that you didn't receive, you might go and then come back to meet some of those things. Huh? Yes. I so don't... all those things might be there crossing you. Maybe you are working to just be crossing you. You go to this company, you are fired. You just go here, just say, oh, hello. And the person will just be like, hey, what's that? I'm not that kind of free with you. Unless you go and contact the soul, for the medium to tell you that these were some things that were done before the soul departed, for those things to be reversed, it will just keep worrying you until it's being done. So, um, whatever we do right now, mm -hmm. like in this life, mm -hmm. like let's assume, example, the show I'm holding mm -hmm. now, if I die right now mm -hmm. and go and somebody comes to mm -hmm. take over mm -hmm. and is running the show, mm -hmm. I go and I'm not, what will bring me back in the first place? What will bring me back? You see, we all, we all as humans are unique in one way or the other. And God Almighty, when creating humans, gave them unique abilities. Now, whenever, let's assume you have the ability of singing, that kind of ability has been given to you, and then maybe you've departed, and then that kind of soul is supposed to reincarnate, or someone is supposed to, take, uh, excuse me, take your place. But the person takes the place and doesn't do that kind of work well. Wherever you are, you feel like you are rejected, like the person is playing with whatever was valuable to you. So if that should be the case, you have to come back, to come and take what is yours. And that one is very, is very obvious almost everywhere you go. It's very, very obvious. obvious. It's just be like um, in, our partic in, this particular, like, in our particular worship. You might see that in this particular temple, they have more assistants here. They have no assistants here. Some of those things are also there. Even in the families. 
You might just be like, oh, we are all siblings. But there's a particular sibling that his or her doings will baffle almost everyone. And everyone will be like, the way you behave is much more stranger to the way we behave. Why? Ha have, you, have you seen or experienced somebody mm -hmm. who, is dead, who was very bad mm -hmm. in the previous life, mm -hmm. has gone and come back, mm -hmm. and what he, he or she is going through, mm -hmm. what he or she will go through? Mm -hmm. Have you experienced that before? Actually, I've Give not me three. I've not experienced one before, mm -hmm. but there are instances. Now, what actually happens is that normally with the issue of reincarnation, it occurs about 80% right from your family, or it occurs within the family itself. It's about 20% that goes outside of the family. That's maybe, maybe when you die through an accident, to become in there. But what actually happens is that whenever someone in a particular family commits a crime, and the person dies without accepting that particular wages or the punishment from the crime the person committed, whenever that soul is reincarnating again into a different flesh, through a different system or a different, um, uh, let's like say, family, that kind of thing shows in that particular person's character. You see this kind of wickedness. The person will just be wicked. Uh, me, for instance, my mother was like, uh, my late grandfather or my late great grandfather, who was a Muslim, uh -huh, um, um, I was named after him. And then, according to what they were saying, they were like, he was very wicked. And it's like, whatever you do with him, the only thing he likes is to put either cutlass or a knife. And then it was like, they placed that kind of name on me. So when I was going to, they were confirming that I was also acting in that way, just like the way the man did. Every little thing you do to me, if I don't pick stone, then maybe knife will follow. If I don't say this, maybe that thing will follow. So they had to go and do the con consultation. That was where they realized that this was what was happening. So they were like, if that should be the case, then when I'm being brought home, that kind of name given to me should be placed aside. And after that particular thing was being done for me, that kind of feelings and all those stuff, everything just disappeared. That was just the name. I want to know about someone. That, that was not the soul. Mm -hmm. It was just the name. Yeah, actually what happens is that these kind of names and souls are always linked up together. Because once you go and contact someone's soul, even before naming, the person will tell you, once I came here into this world, I was this, I was this, I was that. My name was this. Give me that same name. Even if you are given a different set of name, that kind of soul that was once existence name is being attached to the name you are being given to in your current world. And you will be behaving like that person. Pepe, pepe. Chake mogo krabem. Until something is being done about me, it. If, like, he was killing people, mm -hmm. you, will behaving, you will be behaving that way till you are pepe. also killed. Not, so not in also aspect, killed. Um, pepe, till you are I killed. want to know if somebody was very wicked, mm -hmm. died, gone, mm -hmm. reincarnated, what will happen to that person? And if that person was good mm -hmm. and went? Yeah, what, what actually happens is that once the person is bad, and the person dies, and then the person comes in a new form. That kind of, um, how do you call it, uh, mentality, or that kind of actions will be visible to the new person that is in the world now. Then the, what happens is that that particular person is just going to start as something like um, something more disturbing to the parents. Maybe they're just playing, they shall just hit someone here. Children can be playing, and maybe just one particular person can bite the other one. But the way this particular child might bite the other friend might be something severe. Maybe you can just be playing and a one-year-old child can just speak cutlass. If you do, I'll kill you. You might not be expecting that from an ordinary one-year-old child. But once that particular thing goes on, you have to know there's something extraordinary working there. Or that particular child is coming from somewhere. Coming from his previous bad Perfect. behavior. You are watching Revelations. I remember watching a movie. Uh, no, not a movie. Small video. Be someone sent me. A younger boy. He said me, when I grow up, I want to be a killer. Mm. So they asked him, say, why? He said, because I just love killing people. Then the teacher who was asking the child that question asked the child, so will you kill me too? He said, no, for you, I won't kill you. Mommy, I won't kill her. Daddy, I won't kill her, but I will kill everybody in the world. Mm. Then they asked him, the teacher said, why will you teach? Because you are my teacher, you need to teach me how to kill people. Hey, someone sent me the video oh, yeah, and I there. didn't post it anyway. And, and, and one thing about it is that it's not about only African so, but almost every aspect of all various cultures in the world do have this kind of transmigration of the soul thing. Uh, except some particular religious denominations that would be like, oh, if we should um, empower our people to understand or to know more of that, they will not be believing in one or two things. So let's limit them out and then let's act like it's something demonic to those that 
do believe in that. And for me over here, I'm a lover of cartoons a lot. And I believe that through watching that, you find out some kind of these um, um, stuffs that are being disguised in a way. I was just watching Coco. And it was like this kind of ring, and this something was very visible in the whole the of the cartoon. The one that was playing there. Perfect. People would just be like, oh, it's just a cartoon meant for kids. No, there's something there they are telling they you. They are printing this thing into the eyes of their children. Perfect. There's this hmm. thing there they are telling you, but if you are not wise enough to analyze what they are trying to tell you, you just be like, oh, it's just an ordinary cartoon. One thing that baffled me was that from the location of where Coco was being shot, it was a Christian town. And then inside the house where that boy's grand, uh, great-grandmother was, there was a cross behind her. But yes, so they were still believing in this thing of ghosts coming to visit them, and then they're going to reincarnate and coming back into the world thing. That means something true. Coco, I have watched that it's for true. cartoon. I love cartoons, so I watch them. You are watching Revelation. See, Niamh Bebre, Wawa, and Kofor, a printing movies, Niamh Bebre, Siano, to see a printing called Niamh Gu or Mumba, no Adjuni Mumi Nyebi, and I'm coming printing Eddie Eguma. So, do you think all these people like Kwame Nkrumah? Mm -hmm. Uh, the Yas and Tuwes, mm -hmm. our, those people, do you think, the, is there a possibility that they've reincarnated? Oh, you see, per reincarnation, eh, and then the kind of, um, how do I say, um, um, period you spend in the afterlife depends on who you were in the present life or in your previous life. Okay. So for Explain someone like... That, break it down. Uh -huh, let's assume that in your previous life, you were a good person. For you to reincarnate, it becomes very easy for you. But if you were a bad person, once you go there for you to uh, reincarnate, it becomes a difficult task. Because those over there uh, uh, might be feeling that once you come again, you just start doing those same things you did. And truly, when you come to that same things that uh, is being done, or you just come out to manifest yourself from the, uh, from the kind of uh, old life you were existing, and so things are being placed in order for, uh, for you to come down, or for your soul to, uh, to come down. So for them to reincarnate, is very easy. But the only thing that will not be too... Um, assuring is that we might, not, we might not be able to tell exactly where they are until they come out to light. We cannot tell because exactly they where might they not are. fall into the same family. Yes. They can fall anywhere. anywhere because they are souls, they are energies. So whatever they think they are compatible with or the kind of uh, family they want to, um, um, how do I say it, experience, they might transmigrate from where they, they are into a new system, maybe somewhere else. That was why earlier on I told that um, uh, reincarnation within the family is about 80%. But there are some about 20% to that go from outside of the family too. So let's assume how Kwame Nkrumah was doing and the mm -hmm. Yas and Tuas mm -hmm. and the Kung and mm -hmm. them. If they should come again, mm -hmm. though they might reincarnate, mm -hmm. but the power that was in mm -hmm. them, would that power still be there the power with will still whoever? Be there. The power will be there. And how would we, the people, know that this man has come back? Mm -hmm. This that man is, is doing this. That is when the child begins to behave strangely. One. You are asking just a simple question. The child can give you an in-depth explanation to that particular question you are asking. Your mind within, or to an extent that maybe your mind might not be like, I'm not thinking this particular child can tell me this. Or maybe you are seeing this kind of strange behavior. The child can just take this. Oh, mommy, are you sick? Yes. Take this herb. Add it to this water. Drink. That alone tells you that there's something working within that particular child. So once, once you just analyze your children critically, you can be able to tell whether they are reincarnated or not. And mm. out of that particular one, when, when someone who was having power dies, that kind of energy is still there. So the new person to come has two um, um, possibilities. Whether to make that particular power work more than it was, or to make it worse than it was. It all depends on the new, new person coming. Okay, so if, take us through. Mm -hmm. Maybe if I should give birth to Kwame Nkrumah, mm -hmm. Or I should turn into, uh, maybe I am uh, uh, reincarnated. So mm -hmm. let's assume mm -hmm. I am Yasantoa. Mm -hmm. Or I am, oh, Okonfanoche there is too high. Okonfanoche and Yasantoa, who was more higher? I think the Okonfo, because of um, this spiritual incantation. Uh -huh. Yasantoa was just a war leader. It was just a, mm -hmm. so you just say maybe I'm Yasantoa. Mm -hmm. So how would, my, I didn't fall into maybe mm -hmm. they are family. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh, but I am in my own world. Mm -hmm. How would my people, I, mm -hmm. if I say my people, mm -hmm. the entire country, because he was, she was for the entire country, mm -hmm. how would they benefit mm -hmm. if whatever she was carrying should reinforce mm -hmm. or should reincarnated, reincarnated into me? Uh, into me. Mm -hmm. How would the people benefit from me? Okay. The people will benefit from you in so many aspects. If you should watch the story of Yasin to appear the way it was told, you could tell that she was a brave person. Good. Now, being it in that same way, 
per her era, when she was alive, there were these kind of battles and wars that were being fought. And then history makes us know that she got up one day, she encouraged others to, uh, 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 for her to lead them to these kind of battles. Now, I can tell you boldly that as of now, we have various forms of Yasin to all over Ghana. And you are even one of them. Because any particular person that stands to pioneer any kind of um, um, a mentality that brings liberation towards a group of people automatically is a yasin to and that kind of energy cannot be destroyed. It can only be distributed in other minor forms. So maybe per, um, she, who, who she used to be, she was having the complete form. Now she has deceased. They can be having a minor form, one in Greater Accra, one in Ashanti region, one here, one here, one here. When all those people come together, they're able to identify themselves and they come together, that kind of one aura is being formed. And then this kind of strong union is being formed that can pioneer something in the 21st century and not like the way it used to be in the era of mm, war, war, mm, war, war. Mm, 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 so they are there. The Asenjos are there. They are very, very, they are so much there. So they are there. I want you to call them. <laughs> Me, I would want you to call them to come. <laughs> because we need them. You know we need them. Yeah, we do. They were brave people who were trying to help mm. us. They are there. If they have really... But can you tell maybe some of them have died and they didn't reincarnate, they've become gods or demigods. Is it possible? Um, per our system of belief, once you die a natural death or you die through war, you become an ancestor. I would say an ancestor isn't a god or a demigod. They are only people that can be invoked. Uh -huh. Or there are people that I would say they take up after um, um, the, 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 the shape of their skin to make themselves visible to you when they want or when you are present to see them. But for them, they don't become, they don't become gods or demigods. The only thing they can do is that since they've been in this life and then they've also been through this kind of pains and hardships we've also been through, once we invoke them, and we seek for directions from them, they stand to grant us because they know exactly what we are going through because they were once here like we also are. So the kind of pains we've been through or we are going through, they've also been through. <coughs> but for them to be qualified as gods or demigods, I would say it's a big no. It's a big no. It's a big have no. You have you watched a movie of aliens mm -hmm. or have you experienced, have you heard about aliens before? Yeah, we hear of the names aliens, aliens. Aliens. Do mm -hmm. you think some of our ancestors have become aliens? Oh, Yes. You see, and the thing is that we have life in the universe itself. Life is on, it's not only limited to Earth. We have other various forms of life in the main universe itself. But it's like the dominant ones are the ones in this um, um, universe called, uh, in this uh, planet called Earth. Now, there are other forms of life elsewhere. It could be that per the way the person witnessed the life on this Earth and the person has departed, he or she has decided not to get anything to do with Earth again. So the person might try to transmigrate into a different place. But for those over there, they, I would say they are not that, they are not that many because it's not everyone that wishes to um, um, be um, there. Live, uh -huh. It's not everyone that wishes to be there. Because once you are there, for you to transmigrate again into this world, it might, I guess it will be something difficult. It will be very, okay, very difficult. So you've, have you heard about somebody slept mm -hmm. and the next day the person was lost mm -hmm. and that was the end of it? Yes. I heard the story of that. There was one man in my town. My father was telling me this story not, recent, not too long ago, just recently. And he was like, there was a man by name Togodia. It's the name of a stool, as a now in my town. This particular man was living with the family, and it was like the family wasn't corresponding with him in some aspects. Like, they were not showing him this kind of respect and love and things. So he was just there, and he told his children that he would die, but they would never see his corpse. According to the, the story my father was telling me, <clears throat> I had one afternoon, this particular man took a piece of cloth and then placed it on the head. And the head began to move around. No one knows where he passed till today. The only thing they saw was a cave, or I'll say like a groove that he went to form. And then they saw the kind of shirt he was wearing that he has deposited over there. But for them to locate where the person is till now, it was a mystery. That one, we cannot say he was caught up. Mm -hmm. We know people that go to farm and they get caught mm -hmm. up and mm -hmm. all that. Oh, for those ones, when talking about those particular ones, um, you see, we are not alone in this world. We have dwarfs, we have demigods, we have gods, we have goddesses. They are there. Now, uh, there was this particular girl in my house. And I don't like to mention her name. She was just there and then out of nothing, she just disappeared. She went missing for three days. People went around to look for her. They couldn't find her. 
On the fourth day or so, they saw her standing by the street side holding banana. This kind of dwarf bananas. So someone saw the person and was like, ah, is that not the kind of daughter you are looking for? The woman was like, yes. So they called her, they sat her down, they gave her water. And they asked her where she was coming from. She told them that she went into a place that she doesn't know. It was later on that the thing came out clear that she was captured by dwarfs because they take interest in her and they have these kind of things they wanted to teach her. But they were also thinking that since no one knows where she has gone to and then the kind of days she has gone to spend with them, they were thinking that maybe they'll be looking for her so they have to bring her back with that, with that particular person, not being able to complete the kind of lesson she was supposed to take. And ever since she came, she has never gone again. So we have those particular ones there. Someone might just go. Because in those particular forests, maybe you just go and start farming in a forest that is a groove to someone you don't know. You don't know what the person has placed down there to establish that particular groove. You're not supposed to enter. You just enter. You might just disappear. Maybe you might disappear in a way that no one will see you again. Or maybe you might disappear to an extent. You might return. For you to come and tell that oh, this particular place is not, it's a no-go area. No one should go there. Or you might even disappear to the extent that you just going to land somewhere else in the world. No one knows. Just like the way I was talking to you about those that died through accident. When you come to the Ghana aspect of reincarnation, we have uh, um, those that died through accident, like I said earlier. Someone might just go fishing, and then the person might just drown in the sea. Someone might just be crossing the road. Car might knock that particular person down. Someone might just commit suicide. All those ones are there. But what actually happens is that such people, when they die, it's like they've, they've not lived their life to the fullest. So what happens is that once their funeral ceremony is being conducted here and then, they've been escorted they be giving farewell to go away for them to migrate again. They take up that same flesh they left earlier. And then they just go to live elsewhere, far away from where they departed. Because the kind of life they were living, they have not completed that. Ah, but the dead body, the body that is, that is being buried, how yes, would they take they, it? They do take it up. From the coffin? You see, it will not be from the coffin because the body itself will rot. But per the aspect of the spirit... They take it up and then they go to live elsewhere. So it only take those that knows them to be able to identify this particular person over here died somewhere here, but the person is living here. And once they are able to detect that out, someone they know might be getting nearer, they begin to begin to do their things fast, 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 fast. Because once they are being seen, that means they have to die officially now. You don't see again. them dying again. And they, they, they will bury the person twice. You will not see the person, the person dying, but the person will just disappear. Uh -huh. Without why you don't see where they are going to occur again. Mm -hmm. But whenever they die through accident, they go to live elsewhere. It's just another form of migration. It is, it is, it is a constant. Oh, it's a constant thing. That you die through accident, oh. you go and live somewhere. You see, normally when you live within this particular um, spiritual community, it's not in, maybe in terms of the spirit, but in communities that do have this belief system of spirit, some of these things are very relevant. In my time, I also heard that. That the man died, he went to live elsewhere. He even got a wife, gave birth. And then he also showed the children, the family to come, the house to come and look for, the name to mention. And then when they just came there, they mentioned the name and they were like, Who is your father? They mentioned the man's name too. Was that the, the man's three names? They mentioned all. They just sat down, they were giving chair, they were giving water, and then they were like, Those over there began to cry. So they were like, Ah, there's something strange here. What's happening? We just came here as strangers to you and you're just crying. And I just told them, like, The man that you are claiming is your father has died and hey. has been buried. It's there. That's a reincarnation. It's, it's nothing you can never do about it. It is dead. But is that one too reincarnation? Oh, it's not a reincarnation. Not per the souls of those children, but per the soul of the one dying, being buried, taking up the body again to go and marry elsewhere to give birth. It's also reincarnation. It's also reincarnation. How many times reincarnation. do we have? This is the first I, time I'll say, years. per now, I'll say maybe two. Because we have the normal one for those that die natural death. And they also have those that die artificial death. Artificial death may just be like you shooting yourself, drinking poison, car knocking you down, drowning in water, all those on the artificial death. Because we assume that the kind of life expect expectancy God has given to you, you've not been able to hit that particular aspect. So once you're able to hit, that is when you die naturally. But if you're not able to hit and then someone cuts you off, you go elsewhere to go and continue that kind of life you're living. But I had, I had, but is it, is, can, if, can a black man die mm -hmm. and reincarnated as a white man? A white man? Yeah, it's not okay, but it's not too common. Maybe like once in a while. Because the only thing that can help you tell if that particular white man who was once a black man uh, has been reincarnated is the person's past experiences. The person might maybe pick a particular town where he or she died from and might tell you everything into details about that particular town. 
That is when you understand how true the person has, has reincarnated. And then but the, it's possible. It's possible. It's possible. Queen Elizabeth. <laughs> <laughs> but I have to ask ourselves this question. If we all should die and be reincarnated into white, who would take off the African continent? And the water extent? come here. <laughs> so we are changing. Yes, the same. Yes, it's the same. You are watching revelations and my name is Mami Grace. We are talking about reincarnation. So what has reincarnation got to do with ghosts? When oh. we say ghosts, are they real? Yes, ghosts are real. So what, what uh, has reincarnation got to do with ghosts? Okay, so if I were to explain this particular um, um, aspect, we as, I would say, Africans, especially my, my people, my Ghana people, we take one thing into common. Like, we take one thing, and that particular thing is the susuma. We believe that this particular susuma is responsible for everything. But when you just take the susuma into details, we have two aspects. We have the susuma, and then we have the kla. The kla is the unit form that pushes you up to do everything in this world. Be it good or bad, is the clap. Therefore, whenever you're in the gang community and then someone does something that is bad, the person, you just hear an insult like, excuse my language, you, uh, that means that they're insulting the, 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 the unit form of life that is backing you to do that particular thing you did. And then we also have the susuma, that I'll just explain in English as a um, um, breath of life. Now, or that thing that comes up as a ghost once you die, what happens is that that particular one takes the shape of the body you are having now. And then they only make themselves visible at some particular times. So once you see the visibility of someone who has died some time ago, you just know that this particular person is what, it's a ghost. But for you to see the clock, it's something you never see. It only manifests itself through what the person does, as in being good or bad. That's the, that's the kind of explanation I can give to that particular aspect. Okay, so mm -hmm. we can't really say that. Can we say that maybe um, Kwame Nkrumah has come, mm -hmm. has reincarnated? Mm -hmm. Is it possible that he will come back fighting to be a president again so he can correct all these errors? Yes. It may not maybe be in the form of a person coming back again in the name Kwame Nkrumah, mm -hmm. but might be a person in a different form with a different name, from a different town, a different region. And the person might take over this tool and rule exactly like the way Kwame Nkrumah did, or even more than he did. So the souls that are there and has not reincarnated mm -hmm. yet, mm -hmm. can they see what's going on here? Oh, yes. They know. That's why we invoke them as, uh, almost every time we pray, because they are also, I'll say, um, um, uh, in a way like uh, intermediaries. They also move up and down. They also know. They go, they see things going on, and then they come out. They, they come to also give this kind of, um, I'll say, um, talks or revelations or this kind of visions. You are just sleeping and be having a dream about something going on somewhere else. It might not be that of maybe, I'll say, a deity or a divinity, but maybe of a particular soul that has what, departed. The person is just trying to maybe teach you something. I once was just lying down there, and this particular thing occurred to me. It was like my soul was just leaving my body. I was trying, I was just struggling because I'm just afraid that maybe if it goes, I will die. The only thing I saw was one lady, I don't know, but the woman was like, come, I'll teach you something. I had wanted to go, but I was also thinking of what to happen to my body itself once I also move out. So I just had to struggle, struggle, struggle. I just had to turn myself around. And then once I just woke up, I realized, I realized the thing was like, it wasn't like a dream or something like that. But the thing was actually working. So such, such things do okay. That they, they are just there. They see everything. They might only choose some particular people and then give those kind of informations to to go and give out. There are some people that do communicate with ghosts, not through necromancy, but they can just be there and the person just okay or appear to them that they can see. They just be like, oh, go to this family. Tell them that um, the way they are, they are behaving towards this particular individual, they should change. When they go, they should look over here. I left this thing here. I left this thing here. I left this thing there. They are there because they were once humans. They also had the human life. They had the human experience. So they also know what goes on. But they can see us. We cannot see yes, them. Yes, we, we can see them. They Choose to let, allow us to yes, see them. Yes, they choose to allow. But so, we have some humans too that are able to see them. Uh, that one, those who have that gift. Yes, we have those that, that, those mm -hmm. that can see them. So in this manner, mm -hmm. they, those who are there mm -hmm. and can see us, we mm -hmm. cannot see them. Mm -hmm. We are here. Mm -hmm. Who has authority? Who is stronger? Or who is powerful? Okay, I will when say... When you compare the two of us. I will say when you compare the two, we will all be of the same rank. Just that... We as humans will be a little bit above them. As in we using our brains. As in we not accepting commands from anyone. For they over there, you can be suffering, they will not mind you. Until you invoke them, 
they'll never come to your attention or they never, they'll never come to your aid. But once you invoke them, they'll come. When you invoke them to, uh, and tell them to do what is good, they'll do what is good. When you tell them to do what is bad, they'll do what is bad. They don't have their will. Yes. It's like they follow the commands of humans. So in a way, humans are a little bit above their ranks. Above their ranks. Above their ranks. So can I wake up one day and mm -hmm. decide to get pregnant mm -hmm. with maybe uh, Okonfuanochi? Mm -hmm. And then I would, is there anything for me to do, mm -hmm. invoke to bring him inside my tummy and give birth to him? Yes. Um, what actually happens is that it's the power of the mouth. Whatever you see will definitely work. And whatever you say plus drink or plus water works more than normal. Especially when you are doing that particular thing continuously. You even end up giving birth to a child that... <laughs> They are there. But it's just that we humans have still not realized that we have that, that particular kind of power, that particular kind of invocation we can do. Why? That's because when you just go up and then you come down, it relies on this kind of Western religions that were pushed down to us or pushed down to our necks. Because majority, no, yeah, majority of some of these particular Western religions do not have this kind of this concept of reincarnation. Why? That's because. They think that oh, Africans have this particular kind of um, um, uniqueness that they claim that's per what they think. For us, it is what we know. We don't believe we know. But for them, they claim those over here have this idea of reincarnation, have this idea of reincarnation. And for that particular reason, once we are bringing a different set of belief towards them, they have to wipe everything they have as theirs away because all those ones might be of um, barbarism and um, pri uh, primitiveness per what they will be saying or maybe may even be fetish as they might be quoting. So once you are doing away with those things, that means everything should go. And I can, I can also say that maybe it wasn't the will of the white man to let these particular things go, but some fellow Africans, that may just be like, oh, they are in a the new system. So since they are in a new system, the way they believe in all those things, everything should just, what, should just change. I can even tell that there are some pastors that if you go to their house, they know exactly that this particular child over here, behaving here, is a reincarnated soul. But for them to tell their child, they will never do it. Because if they do it, they just be like, oh, they are taking their child back to their roots. And don't take care, the child just be like, oh, my father said I'm reincarnated. I have the choice to be who I used to be or to be the new person I am now. And parents just be like, oh, we are not going to accept that because we are of this particular faith. For that reason, just follow us. Don't go here. Don't do this. Don't do this. Don't do that. So for Africans, they have, they have this kind of huge power. But... They just decided to let everything go. Why? Mm. Is there hope? Oh, there's hope. Once there's life, there's hope. And there is hope, but for this kind of hope to be inculcated into those that are around now and those that are yet to come, unless this kind of mental bound is being opened up. How do we open the mental yes, bound? Yes, by educating those around that the kind of assumptions they have that their way of life is demonic, is evil, is barbaric, is uncivilized, it, 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 it's not so. It's something that actually defines them. And so they are being taught to love who they are as black people who just continue being in this particular aspect. Will, will, are we, will we ever love ourselves as black people? Oh, yes, we will. There are some black people that love themselves. Mm -hmm. And then they are trying to push that particular agenda towards other Africans. Last time I was even watching this particular thing and then there were these black children that were giving some kind of baby dolls. They were doing that just to test their conscience. And then one particular black girl over there, when the dolls were being placed down, she was asked to go and pick one. She picked a white baby. And then the woman came there with a the black baby and asked her, why did you choose the white over the black? The girl was like, people say, a young girl, she was like, people say black is not beautiful. She just bowed down the head, a young girl, around two years. And the woman was like, so was that why you chose the white baby? She said, yes, the white baby is nice. That's also the kind of environment we are living in that once we do not inculcate this black way of life into those around us, we just end up relying on... <laughs> I just heard someone who just left here talking about one man who was like, if not for the sake of the white man, the black man will not be available. Or... Mr. Fima. Until that particular kind of mentality is being instilled or instilled into us, we will still see ourselves and white as what supremacists. We will just be like, there is nothing a black man can do. But looking, Chawe, looking at our behavior, mm -hmm. our loss in our lands, mm -hmm. do you think we, we, we are not responsible for our predicament? Oh, yes. We, those now, we are not responsible. We are not responsible in about 30%. 
we are responsible in about 70%. How? For instance, if someone should live a life that didn't go on well, that is why we have history. You have read that this particular person didn't do well in the previous life. And the person has, let's assume, died. It's your turn now. You are in the world now. It's up to you to refer to the old things the person did that was not right. For you to correct those ones to make things move on well. But if you also go back to hold on to that, hold on to, on to that particular thing the person did that was wrong, then you have yourself to blame. And we as Ghanaians, I would say especially, we have that kind of problem. How do we solve it? Hmm. A way of solving, a way of solution. It's only clear when the black man tries to wake up. For now, majority are still slumbering. People are trying to cause this black awakeness almost everywhere. This kind of um, a sound consciousness almost everywhere. But it's like the black man has held on to something that is imaginary, that he believes is real. Yet they just die, they go, and then they come back in a different form again. So just ask yourself, if that particular concept planted into you is real, you just go, and then you never reincarnate. Because you are being taught that once you die, it's over. But you go. And then you come back again. And you are telling me it's over. How, How should I do? They, they said they don't believe. You are saying they come back. They don't believe they come back. Oh, they do. Every particular uh, uh, individual as a Ghanaian or an, as an African does because they have that as part of their way of life. So they do. But it's just that they just give a blind eye to that. They do. If not, like, whenever they are naming children, they'll just give you a new set of names. But they'll just tell you, need this, not nah, that, not nah, nah, this. Who was that? Not nah, that came before you giving that particular name to that particular child you are talking about. All these names we just give, they are not just ordinary names, but this particular kind of titles attached to were meant for some particular people. So once you bring that particular title to a newborn child, automatically you are telling that particular child that you have been reincarnated. Hmm, you are watching Revelations. So Nimbocha, with the things that you think we have done, mm -hmm. not to make sure we locate each and every child that has reincarnated. Mm -hmm. If we are able to notice them, we are able to groom them, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. In the way, mm -hmm. if there, is, there are some, if the previous life, the person was bad, mm -hmm. and we are able to know, mm -hmm. we take the, the person through sacrifice or mm -hmm. rituals mm -hmm. to reduce whatever mm -hmm. bad like your father mm -hmm. did for you. Yeah. So what and what and what do you think we have to put in place? Mm -hmm. To make sure that when somebody, if somebody should reincarnated now and mm -hmm. he was a bad person, mm -hmm. he cannot become worse okay. than he was, like you said. Okay. So, series of things can be done. I can only just talk about some few. As in one, calling the child, sitting the child down, and letting the and you, the parents, analyze to the child that this was what you were. Just, just let them understand the concept of the reincarnation thing in their own way, that you are a human. But the kind of force that brought you into this world now existed some time ago. And then you are back again. In your previous life, you were this, you were this, you were that. Tell them they know, they will understand. Because you might be thinking that maybe they are just children. But the kind of energy they are having is even more than or as older than you are even thinking hmm. of. So once you tell them they know and they will accept that inside, just take them to the good path. That once you are now in this kind of new life, when you insult someone, is wrong. We don't insult. We don't insult. We don't insult elderly. When you are playing with your friends, we don't beat them. When you are playing with people, we don't say this. We don't. Per the way you talk to them and per the way you handle them, we just that let them understand. That is if you are able to know. Yes, and that's what I said earlier on. That once you just like you just give birth, you realize this kind of strange things about your child. That child, that particular child, is not an ordinary child. Just go and look for the child. Go to any medium, be it priest, priestesses, and then those that are spiritualists, they will tell you everything. From the beginning to the end, what brought the child into the, new, into the old world? What happened? Mm. Where the child go to? What killed the child? Why the child is back here again? Are the they kind there? of mission. They are there. Our priestesses can do that work. They are there. But the only thing that pushes people away from them is this kind of westernization. And, and one thing that really baffles me is that when you just get over there, especially England, where church of, uh, 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 the Anglican church is um, originating from, one, one just, once you just get there, you like, like you just, yes, um, Sorry, you just realized that they also have this kind of um, 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 system of worship called Druidism. They also they also have this kind of traditional ways of belief that is also there for them. But yes, so the African man or the Ghanaian man will not and will not, uh, won't just understand what is going on here, and they just be like, oh, once I give in to that, uh, I may be going to maybe hell. 
So for them to just go back and let their children know who but they are. But do you want them to go to hell? Oh, no. You see, um, actually, if the concept of hell does exist, like I said earlier, there shouldn't be reincarnation. Because um, I like to quote a particular scripture. Actually, I don't have the, number, uh, the, the verse in my head. <laughs> but what <laughs> it says is that, uh, for it is appointed unto man to die once. And after that, death comes uh, judgment. judgment. Good. That means that if you should die today, tomorrow you are supposed to be what? You are supposed to be judged. So if you are being judged and you are being given um, redemption to heaven, or you are being given a, 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 a thing, condemnation to hell, how are you going to reincarnate? That means you can never reincarnate. But here is the case that you reincarnate into the world again. No, so that's why we don't believe there is reincarnation. You see, why we will go. Reincarnation itself, or nature itself, is making people to understand. But people are just giving blind eye and deaf ears to that. How? How are they? That's how what I said earlier on. How that. is nature making us to understand? Yes, nature itself created reincarnation. Nature is life. And nature knows that everything existing in it now is supposed to be in the form of a cycle. We humans who live in this world, we die. And then our body becomes food for, for plants. It's, it's something that has recycled, that's just reaching its way. We come back again into a different form, but with the same energy we, we, we were living with some time ago. But for our parents to understand, or for we to understand that this is who we are, we just say no to that. And let's assume that it's occurring in the case of children. Is the work of the parents that before a child is being named, they go, to con they go through mediums to contact who that particular new soul coming is. You see, but once that particular thing has been left out, for you to tell if your, your, your child is reincarnated, you never see. But just go and con contact that particular medium. The medium will just tell you, oh, this particular person here is a new soul. Are they genuine medium here? They are genuine medium. They are there. They are there. Because whatsoever they'll be telling you, you can only tell uh, 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 if someone gives you a fake direction through um, um, the behavior of, it, of the child. After maybe going to contact the medium, the person just tells you, uh, when you go on Monday, they give the child pure water to drink. On Tuesday, they give the child yam. On Wednesday, they do this, do that. But once you are doing these things and the child is still in the same way, you can tell that where you went to that particular person is what? It's not real. It's not original. If you give, what are you supposed to say? If you give the child those stuff. Yes, I'm just giving a scenario. Uh, so give a scenario when it tells, when you give mm -hmm. the behavior the child should bring up for you to know that I went to a real place. Oh, okay. So what, what might actually happen is that the person just said, oh, when, once you just give pure thought to the child, the child will start behaving to this particular limit. Maybe the child has been slapping friends. He or she will stop. The child has become dull at school. He or she will become intelligent. But you realize that after doing all these things, the child is still the same way he or she is. Tell us that where you went to is in the accurate place. So you'll be hearing people be like, oh, I'm having this problem. I have gone round, 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 round. Yes. It is not everyone that is, um, I would say, is original. And it's not everyone too that has this kind of uh, medication towards every particular sickness. We have those that can delve into a particular aspect. It's like a gift. If you have been given the contact of re uh, reincarnation, and I've been maybe given the contact of prayer, I cannot say that oh, since you're having this particular uh, uh, um, sickness, come to me, I'll pray for you. Mm -hmm. No. You have to go and contact someone who is having the solution to your problem. But if you should go to a wrong person, you just end up wasting your time, wasting resources, and then the problem is just going to be there. The problem is just going to be there. Okay, so, um, Chawe, please, take us through three steps of reincarnation, the possible reincarnation, and take us to us through three stages or three things that we should not, as Africans, put in our head about reincarnation. Three steps. The first, once you give birth to a child, before the child is named, go and contact the medium or a, a medium to analyze who the child was. If you fail to do that and the child is behaving strangely or you say that the child is behaving or the child is just, just there, just sit down and be analyzing the ways of that particular child. If all these particular, I've given two now. Those are the basic ones, actually, that you can tell from. That's why I give two. If out of all these particular two things, you are not seeing anything, just take a further step. Some parents will just leave that particular one until the child himself decides to go out to go look for. What is the further step? Let us know. The further step is that you can talk to people that maybe have this kind of, uh, I would say, third eye thing. Uh -huh. If only you can locate some. Just locate them. Or be sharing ideas with elderly people. My child has been behaving strangely of this. He has been doing this. She has been doing this. They will tell you, when I was like this, my parents, I heard my parents saying this, talking about this, talking about that. Get this, get that. Try it and see if it, if it works. If nothing works, I'll take you somewhere. They are there. You didn't say anything. Try that. Try this. It's nothing. Oh, yeah. You see, for the solutions, I can't give that particular solutions over here. But once you move, 
My princess is there. She, she, she also does that. Okay, so, so we will talk to you it. of uh, those who want to know. We'll talk to you of... Mm -hmm. of uh, so let us know. what. Mm -hmm. Tell us the dangers. Mm -hmm. Why we should not mm -hmm. rule this thing out as Africans. The danger of... Not uh, the danger of ruling this particular aspect out as African is that it causes supreme doom. Huh? Yes. Through just one particular person coming to the family. The person can just come or the person can just reincarnate. And you failing to do the above things I have said will just cause the family to go off balance. Anything at all you do in the family will never work. You just be like, oh, you have brought bad luck to the family. No. There is something hidden you have to take an extra step to go and look for. That you haven't done. Out of that same thing, it could also be that the person coming is, is of a good soul. The person can just come and everything in the family will just begin to work well. Or there are some too, they cover things up. When they come, they'll come with something good for you to fall in love or to fall in love with that particular person that has come. But it will get to a particular extent, it will stop. Then, that is why you're supposed to take an extra step to go and find out why that particular thing has, what, has stopped. But until then, Try to rule, uh, rule reincarnation out of, uh, of the African system of belief or ways of life. You are causing doom, an eternal doom. Hey. You are watching Revelations, and I'm here with Numo Chawe. Numo, our time is almost due. Mm -hmm. Please, from the bottom of your heart, mm -hmm. advise everybody how important it is to, acquire about your, to inquire about your child or your pregnancy what have you, the process we as Africans used to go through mm -hmm. when we give birth that we've taken out. Remind us and advise us. Okay. So the only little advice I'll give is this. I always say little. Someone told me not say little. Every little advice is big though, but I say little. Uh, once you give birth, before your child is named, try to find a spiritualist. Find out the name the child wants, things the child likes, th things the child dislikes. If not, you end up giving birth to a child, that will be causing doom to the family. Also, if you have failed to do this, somebody will just be like, oh, I have failed to do this, now my child is grown, what do I do? It is not too late. Okay. Just find a day, go to any medium at all, tell them this is what I want to do. Even pair you, if, your, if your, parent, your parents fail to do it for you, you can even do it for yourself, you can just go to them, let them consult your soul. And I tell you, by so doing, everything will just begin to move on well with your life. But until then, I tell you there's doom. Until then, you tell us there is doom. So that's your final words, and then your, your number. Your final words, your advice, if there are other people you feel they should hear this and take it serious. Mm -hmm. Your final words, and then your number, if there are social media handles. Okay, so the last thing I have to say to all viewers around the world is this. No matter who you are, no matter where you are, the kind of system of belief you find yourself inside. Know that once you are an African, reincarnation is part of your life. Do not stand up and move against the ways of life of the African because that's what defines you. If God has wanted you to, let's assume, be a different person, he would have created you into a different country altogether or a different continent altogether. But God knows the kind of work he is assigning to you to come and complete here in this universe. And for you to be able to complete that work unless you know who you are and who you used to be. Because the errors you make in your previous life will assist you to take, take on, on to take on to some kind of a newer steps that will make things go on well with you in your life. My number is, or my numbers are, I'll say um, 027-137-7717. The numbers again, 027-137-7717. And then 059-451-9000. Social you. media, any social media? Oh, yeah, my social media handles are there. You can follow me on Facebook. You can send a friend request. Yeah, the name is Numo Chawi Uturumi. The one that carries them all. Numo <laughs> Chawi! <laughs> You are watching revelations now. Share you and that day now reincarnation. Me name is Amir. Pa, who came here? Reincarnated here. And who came here? Why? Mami, be why? Mami, who saw where Nia came? Now, Mami, who shall I be reincarnated here? And come to where me? Why? Can you tell? 
who you are now. Eh. Unless the medium is contacted, we can never tell. Unless the medium, I will come and contact. I have to you come have and to, contact them. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you are one of the um, <laughs> um, um, divided ores of yours and to who knows. Sir, yeah. divided. Mm -hmm. We are watching revelations. The revelations in some who are divided. I want to know. Unima shana katsemi. Eh, thank you so much for watching Revelation. Numbo Tawit, thank you so okay. much for coming. We have a, something bigger coming. We are waiting for him. He is working hard on that. Very soon we'll give you a bigger show. You will love it. I know you will love it. Thank you so much for watching Revelations. We are still the biggest. We are still the largest. We care about our continent as Africans because we love our continent. This is who we are. We keep liberating ourselves gradually. I know we will get there. Thank you so much for watching. We appreciate you. God bless us all. This program is fully sponsored by Global Eagle Revival Outreach Ministries, a not-for-profit organization. To support our broadcast to reach others like you, kindly send support to Zenith Bank, Ghana. Account number 60124020066. Account name, Global Eagle Revival Outreach Ministries. La Trade Fair Branch, Bermacamp. Mobile Money Account, Merchant, 0544859007. Name, Global Eagle Revival Outreach Ministry. Reference, Revelations or TWMG, Time with Mommy Grace.